In this lecture, we're going to talk about how to instantiate a vector space model so that we can get a very specific ranking function. So this is to continue the discussion of the vector space model, which is one particular approach to design a ranking function. And we're going to talk about how we use the general framework of the vector space model as a guidance to instantiate the framework to derive a specific ranking function. And we're going to cover the simplest instantiation of the framework. So as we discussed in the previous lecture, the vector space model is really a framework. It didn't, didn't say, as we discussed in the previous lecture, vector space model is really a framework. It doesn't say many things. So for example, here it shows that it did not say how we should define the dimension. It also did not say how we place a document vector in this space. It did not say how we place a query vector in this vector space. And finally, it did not say how we should measure the similarity between the query vector and the document vector. So you can imagine in order to implement this uh, model, we have to say specifically how we compute these vectors. What is exactly xi and what is exactly yi? This would determine where we place a document vector, where we place a query vector. And of course, we also need to say exactly what should be the similarity function. So if we can provide a definition of the concepts that would define the dimensions and these xi's or yi's, and namely weights of terms for query and document, then we will be able to place document vectors and query uh, vector in this well-defined space. And then if we also specify a similarity function, then we'll have a, a well-defined ranking function. So let's see how we can do that. And think about the, the simplest instantiation. Actually, I would suggest you to pause the lecture at this point. Spend a couple of minutes to think about it. Suppose you are asked to implement this idea. You've come up with the idea of vector space model. But you still haven't figured out how to compute these vectors exactly and how to define the similarity function. What would you do? So think for a couple of minutes and then proceed. So let's think about some simplest ways of instantiating this vector space model. First, how do we define the dimension? Well, the obvious choice is to use each word in our vocabulary to define a dimension. And if we show that there are n words in our vocabulary, therefore there are n dimensions. Each word defines one dimension. And this is basically the bag of words representation. Now let's look at how we place vectors in this space. Again here, the simplest strategy is to use a bit vector to represent both the query and a document. And that means each element xi and yi would be taking a value of either zero or one. When it's one, it means the corresponding word is present in the document or in the query. When it's zero, it's going to mean that it's absent. So you can imagine if the user types in a few words in the query, then the query vector will only have a few ones, many, many zeros. The document vector generally will have more ones, of course, but it will also have many zeros. Since the vocabulary is generally very large, many words don't really occur in any document. Many words will only occasionally occur in the document. A lot of words will be absent in a particular document. So now we have placed the documents and the query in the vector space. 
Let's look at how we measure the similarity. So a commonly used similarity measure here is dot product. The dot product of two vectors is simply defined as the sum of the products of the corresponding elements of the two vectors. So here we see that it's the product of x1 and y1, so here, and then x2 multiplied by y2, and then finally x and multiplied by yn. And then we take a sum here. So that's the dot product. Now we can represent this in a more general way using a sum here. So this is only one of the many different ways of measuring the similarity. So now we see that we have defined the, the dimensions, we have defined the, the vectors, and we have also defined the similarity function. So now we finally have the simplest vector space model which is based on the bit vector representation dot product similarity and bag of words representation. And the formula looks like this. So this is our formula. And that's actually a particular retrieval function, a ranking function, right? Now we can finally implement this function using a program language and then rank documents for a query. Now, at this point, you should again pause the lecture to think about how we can interpret this score. So we have gone through the process of modeling the retrieval problem using a vector space model. And then we make assumptions about how we place vectors in the vector space and how we define the similarity. So in the end, we've got a specific retrieval function shown here. Now the next step is to think about whether this retrieval function actually makes sense. Right. Can we expect this function to actually perform well when we use it to rank documents for users' queries? So it's worth thinking about what is this value that we are calculating. So in the end, we'll get a number. But what does this number mean? Is it meaningful? So spend a couple of minutes to think about that. And of course, the general question here is, do you believe this is a good ranking function. Would it actually work well? So again, think about uh, how to interpret this value. Is it actually meaningful? Does it mean something? It's related to how well the document matches the query. So in order to assess whether this simplest vector space model actually works well, let's look at the example. So here I show some sample documents and a sample query. The query is news about the presidential campaign. And we have five documents here. They cover different uh, terms in the query. And if you look at the, these documents for a moment, you may realize that some documents are probably relevant and some others are probably non-relevant. Now, if I ask you to rank these documents, how would you rank them? This is basically our ideal ranking. Right? When humans can examine the documents and then try to rank them. Now, so think for a moment and take a look at this slide and perhaps by pausing the lecture. So I think most of you would agree that D4 and D3 are probably better than others because they really cover the query well. They match news, press, schedule, and campaign. So it looks like these two documents are probably um, better than the others. So they should be ranked on top. And the other three, D2, D1, and D5, are really non-relevant. So we can also say D4 and D3 are relevant documents and D1, D2, and D5 are non-relevant. So now let's see if our simplest vector space model could do the same or could do something closer. So let's first think about how we actually use this model to score documents. Right here I show two documents, D1 and D3. And we have the query also here, 
in the vector space model, of course, we want to first compute the vectors for these documents and the query. Now I show the vocabulary here as well. So these are the n dimensions that we'll be thinking about. So what do you think uh, is the vector representation for the query? Note that we are assuming that we only use 0 and 1 to indicate whether a term is absent or present in the query or in the document. So these are uh, 0, 1 uh, bit vectors. So what do you think is the query vector? Well, the query has four words here. So for these four words, there will be a 1, and for the rest, there will be 0. Now what about the documents? It's the same. So D1 has two words, news and about. So there are two ones here and the rest are zeros. Similarly, so uh, now that we have the two vectors, let's compute the similarity. And we're going to use dot product. So you can see when we use dot product, we just uh, multiply the corresponding elements. Right? So these two will be form be forming a product and these two will generate another product and these two will generate yet another product and so on and so forth. Now you can easily see if we do that we actually don't have to care about uh, these zeros because if whenever we have a zero the product will be zero. So when we take a sum over all these pairs then the zero entries will be gone. As long as you have one zero, then the product will be zero. So in effect, we're just counting how many pairs of one and one. Right? In this case, we have seen two, so the result will be two. So what does that mean? Well, that means this number or the value of this scoring function is simply the count of of how many unique query terms are matched in the document. Because if a document if a term is matched in the document, then there will be two ones. If it's not, then there will be zero on the document side. Similarly, if the document has a term but the term is not in the query, there will be a zero in the query vector. So those don't count. So as a result, this scoring function basically measures how many unique query terms are matched in the document. This is how we interpret this score. Now, we can also take a look at the D3. In this case, you can see the result is 3 because D3 matched three distinct query words, news, presidential campaign, whereas D1 only matched two. Now, in this case, it seems reasonable to rank D3 on top of D1 and this simplest vector space model indeed does that. So that looks pretty good. However, if we examine this model in detail, we likely will find some problems. So here I'm going to show all the scores for these five documents. And you can easily verify they are correct because we are basically counting the number of unique query terms matched in each document. Now note that this measure actually makes sense, right? It basically means if a document matches more unique query terms, then the document will be assumed to be uh, more relevant. And that seems to make sense. The only problem is here, we can note that there are three documents, D2, D3, and D4, and they tied with a three as a score. So that's a problem because if you look at them carefully, it seems that D4 should be ranked above D3 because D3 only mentioned the presidential once, but D4 mentioned it multiple times. In the case of D3, presidential could be an accidental mention. But D4 is clearly about the presidential campaign. Another problem is that D2 and D3 also have the same score. But if you look at the, the three words that are matched, in the case of D2, it matched the news, about, and a campaign. But in the case of D3, it matched the news, 
presidential and campaign. So intuitively, D3 is better because matching presidential is more important than matching about, even though about and presidential are both in the query. So intuitively, we would like D3 to be ranked above D2, but this model doesn't do that. So that means this model is still not uh, good enough. We have to solve these problems. To summarize, in this lecture, we talked about how to instantiate a vector space model. We mainly need to do three things. One is to define the dimension. The second is to decide how to place documents as vectors in the vector space and to also place a query in the vector space as a vector. And third is to define the similarity between two vectors, particularly the query vector and the document vector. We also talk about a very simple way to instantiate a vector space model. Indeed, that's probably the simplest vector space model that we can derive. In this case, we use each word to define a dimension. We use a 0, 1 bit vector to represent a document or a query. In this case, we basically only care about the word presence or absence. We ignore the frequency. And we use the dot product as the similarity function. And with such a, a instantiation, we show that the scoring function is basically to score a document based on the number of distinct query words matched in the document. We also show that such a simple vector space model still doesn't work well and we need to improve it. And this is the topic that we're going to cover in the next lecture. Mm -hmm.